All right, what's up everyone? Let's talk about USB cables. They transmit data and power and are essential to our keyboards and other peripherals. So why does one cost $5 and why does one cost 106? This video is sponsored by Cablemon. They did not get to see the video before it went live. I'm very grateful that they sponsored to help keep the dream alive. Honestly, the cheapest thing you can do is just get a regular anchor cable. And if you want to take your little flex pictures for the gram or for the discord, just unplug the cable and focus on the keyboard and the keycaps. If you're willing to shell out some dough and really flex, then you're gonna enjoy the rest of this video. Honestly, the only person staring at your keyboard is yourself, so forget what everyone else thinks. Nasty cables can be purchased to have different colors, the addition of detachable connectors, and they sometimes have coils. Do any of these things affect the performance of the cable? No, but like how some USB cables are power only, sometimes the specification of how the cable is made matters. The only tangible benefit of custom cables is to have a detachable connector that you can disconnect and reconnect without damaging the USB-C port. Typically, if you somehow manage to break off the USB-C port, it's over. It's gonna rip the pads and it's unlikely that it can be fixed. Take it from me, I tried to fix one once and uh, no, it still didn't work. I don't know if anyone actually uses their cables like this where they detach it at the connector because part of the reason you get a custom cable is to match it to your keyboard or your keycaps. If you're swapping keyboards, your cable end no longer matches. So are you really doing the swaps? And in regards to the coil, it adds absolutely nothing. That little coil is just an aesthetic addition to the table and gives the cable some girth. And honestly, the coil makes it a little bit more complicated because the total length, as it's coiled, it needs to be longer. Once it's stretched out, it's gonna make it difficult to power a high RGB board like the Mastrop Alt and the Mastrop Control. Those have perky RGB as well as underglow. Typically, five foot total length is a sweet spot. It can go up to 10 feet, but that's gonna likely reduce the brightness of your RGB or have some issues with these certain boards. All right, I mentioned a few things. Connectors, coils, length, what is going on? Okay, let's take a moment to make it more tangible. Ordering cables has typically been pretty complicated. If you're going through a smaller maker, you're basically on your own to imagine what the cable will look like and tell them what you want. What ends up happening for most beginners like myself is you get a screenshot or a picture of a cable that you like and then you take that to the maker and what if you want to customize it how you know what it looks like there's tech flex there's the cable color itself there's shrink wrap there's connectors there's a whole lot of things cable mod specifically has had a history of making custom pc cables and they have a pretty slick online configurator that saves all that time and stress it shows you the preview of what it's going to look like it shows you all the colors and you don't have to go from website to website to go see what's available when I ordered a custom cable from a smaller maker before, they said, go look at this website, I'll order whatever you want. I'm like, what? I can't imagine what this looks like on a cable. So let's start. You start with the basic structure of the cable, pro or non-pro. Pro just means there's a connector, non-pro is just a regular cable with no detachable. Honestly, if you're going with the non-pro route, why are you getting a custom cable? You can get any regular USB cable from Amazon and you'll save a lot of money. Now you can select which type of keyboard you're connecting to. This forces a max length limit to make sure that your cable works. Then you click your cable end and off you go. For the coil, there's a handy graphic as to which orientation that you want. This is going to depend on the USB port location on your keyboard and the location of your USB hub or your PC itself. Most keyboards are center or left USB, so you want the coil going to the right. Whether the coil terminates straight out or upward is gonna depend on whether or not you use a USB hub. I typically like the cable going to the right. I don't use a USB hub for my keyboard and my PCs on my right. Cable mod does employ reverse coiling for the cables to make sure that it's tight. I'll show you a clip here. It's not going anywhere. If you only do it single, coil once you stretch it out hard enough it's just gonna stay that way and it looks very very gross <laughs> reverse coiling takes more time but it's one thing you want to check whether or not you buy from cable mod or any other vendor now you have this window with sliders to select your specs for lengths if you're lost there's defaults typically you want to use measuring tape to figure out the actual distance from your keyboard to your computer for pcs on the right i like a total of 4.5 feet of cable a little bit less a little bit more depending on your setup if you have the pc on the ground and have a big desk you may need more length if you're unsure just use the defaults and figure out your total length it's all preference here typically coils are six inches and the short distances from the device to the coil are two inches the coil to the connector are two inches i believe a standard total length for a cable is anywhere from four feet to five feet now this is my favorite part of the configurator you can choose what parts you want for the connectors and the sleeving this is where all the color matching happens but be aware of all the price changes according to the parts that you choose there is a standard route and shrink wrap is free but you get an anodized connector or a cerakoted connector it adds a little bit of fee so be aware personally i like that cable mod offers the cerakoted and the anodized options because now it can match my board a little bit better shrink wrap 
it's just a little piece of like rubber. It looks kind of cheap. I mean, it will work. It doesn't matter if you have a hard connector, like a metal connector or a shrink wrap. It depends on how well it's soldered. So if it's soldered well, shrink wrap will work fine. Personally, I like the anodization option because most boards are anodized and it's very smooth. The connector is the next fun part. This is where it gets interesting. Aviators have been the most common for a while. When I got into the hobby, aviators were kind of going out in trend because they're pretty bulky. I'm not sure how they came about, but they're the cheapest connector in the configurator. There's no extra fee if you're going with the pro cable with a connector and just using the aviator. You can choose the color for the aviator and that's what makes it fun. Typically you have your silver aviator, which is pretty standard. You can actually get an aviator cable from Amazon and not have to worry about a custom cable, but here you can make it a nice color. If you have a bigger keyboard that's flashier with taller keycaps, an aviator might fit better. But I think for a lot of us, we may want to go with the slim cable or the limo cable. I personally would go with the slim line. I like these over the typical YC8 because there's little markers to show you where it lines up to connect. With YC8, you're kind of just like eyeballing it or just trying to feel for it. And it looks really dumb, especially if I'm on stream and I can't connect my cable. Like with the aviator, you can pick whatever finish your heart desires. The site will tell you if your parts don't match. So I think that's a cool feature without seeing it. And sometimes you may make a mistake and you have to email them afterwards and it gets a little confusing. Here it's all in the site and there's red text if something doesn't match or you're picking an option that doesn't work. And the baller option is throwing another $70 at this cable by buying a Limo connector. Honestly, it's very overkill for keyboards and it's just really there for the flex. They'll be adding color options to these connectors in the future. So if you really want to match your keycaps, you may want to wait before ordering a Limo cable. Is there a budget Limo? Yes, a budget Limo is just any other connector. You can do YC8, but I really like the slimline ones here because if you look at them side by side, they're not very far apart. They're not very different, except the Limo cable actually has Limo branding on it. Does it matter? Honestly, if you want to throw money at something and it makes you happy, go ahead and do so. Personally, I would rather just go with the slimline or YC8 if I don't go with cable mod. Once you're done configuring a cable, it'll show a summary page and highlight any issues. This is really nice because ordering a custom cable is a very daunting task. Your imagination runs wild and you just add all the options. Make sure you can still afford the cable at the end though. And then you order and you'll get tracking in three to five business days. That is ridiculous. My main complaint with buying from smaller makers is that one, they're not really trusted yet and it's just word of mouth. Two, if they did a great job, fulfilled fast early on, who's to say that they can continue to do that when they get 10 orders, 20 orders, 30 orders, 50, maybe even a larger GB. How long will it take? I worked with a small cable maker before and I was trying to like prop them up and just use my platform to get them more customers. But as soon as they got any more customers, they started dropping the ball. They started communicating poorly. They were unable to deliver on time and they started lying about dropping out the products. Unfortunately, a lot of us are in the hobby because we love it, not because we're good business people. I'd be more willing to buy from CableMod than other vendors because of this fact. CableMod has had a long history of making PC cables and they're high quality. They are more of a premium option, so you gotta keep that in mind. You may be able to get cheaper prices from smaller makers, but your mileage may vary as to whether or not they can deliver. Honestly, the people I know that make great cables, they have a hard cap. They know not to overload themselves. And if they don't have slots open for custom cables, then you just gotta wait. So that's why you should keep in mind all the options that you have. You can go with the smaller one or you can go with cable mod. It's up to you. I really wanna nail down that three to five day to get tracking. Three to five business days, of course, that's ridiculously good. One of the cable makers I've worked with before, it took them four weeks to get the first cable and they made it wrong. And then after that, you're like, I waited so long, I already paid them and I have to send them back for them to fix it. And then it's gonna take another four weeks. And after two months, I'm like, I just needed a cable. I should have just bought something from Amazon. But CableMod is going to be offering more colors to match with GMK sets better. I try to match with a few things. I had a blue cable with some brass kind of finish on it to make it match the new. I tried to match a cable with Taro, but the purple was a little bit too bright. But hey, the theme is kind of there. And then we went with the kind of uh, sleek black limo that will work with any board. Honestly, I'm of the opinion that you should get a more neutral cable, maybe one or two, let's say a dark cable, like a dark gray or a dark black with a slim connector, and then a white cable to work with lighter boards. Let's say same thing, slim light connector or limo maybe, or YCA, and then call it good. If you have more money, you got more sets, and you want to enjoy the hobby and take more pictures, then sure, go with a maker and try to get very specific one-to-one -one matches to GMK sets. It's pretty satisfying to see it match. I personally am just trying to minimize what I have, and. These days I just use GMK white on black and maybe beige, so I don't really care about too much fancy colors. But CableMod's gonna offer that option to the finishes, to the connectors, to the detachables, and the cables themselves. There's a lot of options to match 
anything that you may want to match it to. Now, back to the original question. Is there a real difference between a cheaper cable and a more expensive one? Honestly, not really. But the same thing with keyboards. Our, our keyboards don't type better than pre built they just look cooler and are more fun. Your budget is personal, and whether or not you think it's worth it, that's your choice as well. For me, I'll spring for one or two nice cables in neutral colors. I know people who love matching their cables to their keyboards, and it does look really cool, but it ends up adding up in cost. If that's you though, cable mod's gonna be right up your alley. All right, y'all, that's gonna be it for this video. Hopefully I was able to demystify some of the confusion around custom cables from the perspective of a consumer. Thank you again, CableMod, for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.